Today we're headed to Salem. Well, not literally, but after you watch this video, it's gonna feel like we went there because I am bringing you a ton of Hocus Pocus inspired DIYs and decor ideas, and they are all perfect to celebrate the release of Hocus Pocus 2. This is Whiskey and Wit. My name is Whitney, and on this channel, I love to share DIYs and budget home decor. So if you love that too, be sure to hit subscribe down below so we can be craft buddies. And also a huge hello and welcome back to my craft buddies that come back week after week to craft with me. And be sure to stay tuned until the end because that's where I'm going to share all of my vlog content from our recent Denver YouTube trips. What would the movie be without a black flame candle? So these are so easy to make and very affordable. This one came from Target in a two pack and this one came from Dollar Tree. All you need to make these is a little bit of tape and a little bit of paint. You're gonna take some painter's tape and apply it around the flame so you don't get black paint all over your candle. Then I did three coats of black chalk paint on both of these flames. Let it dry, remove your tape, and voila, you've got some awesome black flame candles that you can display, and they're so easy to make. Now, if you know me, you know I love my printables, and this video is no exception. I've got a pack of 17 large size printables you can download over on my blog. All the information as well as a tutorial to download them will be down in the description. And these were so fun to design. I've got some rectangle designed ones, and then I also have some small square ones that I put into some Dollar Tree frames that I had in my stash. You just wanna measure your frame, size the image that you download from my blog, you can print it out, trim it, and then I like to apply it with double stick tape. I printed all those on my HP printer on just regular printer paper, regular ink, and they came out really looking great. So you can do this really easily and cost effective. You can also get them printed at like a UPS store or a FedEx if you don't have a printer at home. Another must have element for any Hocus Pocus setup are the Sanderson sisters. I knew I wanted to make some large scale ones for a setup this year, but I wasn't quite sure how they were gonna shake out. I decided to go the route of using styrofoam cones and balls and it turned out super great. And the good news is these are super easy to put together. I started with my cone and my ball and hooked them together with three toothpicks so they would stay in place. You can also use hot glue if you feel you need to. And then I used this flesh color paint that I had left over from a gnome project to paint the heads. Then I painted all three of the different bottoms, red, purple, and green for the different sisters. And then I started on the hair. To give Sarah a little bit of a wave to her hair, I wrapped some yellow yarn around some dowel rods and heated it up with my embellishment gun. You really only need to do it for about 30 seconds. And then once I unwrapped it, it had a natural kind of wave to it, which is what you want because she has been sleeping for quite some time. Once I did that, I did one layer of hair. I followed up with a second layer of hair and then it was time to move on to Winifred. So I used two of these flat edge wood circles to do the two buns on the top of her head. And then I used hot glue and some orange yarn to wrap them. I went around both of the buns until I couldn't anymore. And then I used hot glue to hook it over the top of those buns. Now for Mary's hair, I used some floral wire. I doubled it up and glued it to the top of her head. And that allowed me to get kind of that beehive look that she's so known for. With the help of hot glue, I wrapped it all the way around to the tip. And then I used some purple yarn around the top to look similar to her hair in the movie. And my favorite touch to these are these velvet cloaks. I got this fabric from Hobby Lobby and I cut a piece that was just a little bit longer than the length of my witches. So then that way I had a little bit of extra fabric around their neck to look like a hood. I just used some jute twine to tie it around the neck and these looked awesome. Now, what would they be without their flying instruments? Cause they didn't all have brooms. For Sarah's mop, I ended up pulling apart some white nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I used a dowel rod and some cardboard cut to a circle at the end. I just glued the pieces on to get the look of a mop and then trimmed the end so it was even. And then for Mary's vacuum, I looked at a bunch of pictures from the movie and I decided to start with some cardboard. I cut out pieces to resemble the bottom of the vacuum. And then I used some of this craft paper that I had and used hot glue to kind of wrap that bottom. I wanted to make sure my edges were pretty flat. So I wrapped it like a present the best way that I could. And I made sure everything was glued down. I grabbed another dowel rod and trimmed it down so that I could create a kind of angled handle. I hooked it onto the base of my vacuum with some hot glue and then it was time to make the vacuum bag. So I took some more of that craft paper, just glued it into a tube, stuffed it with a little bit of extra polyfill, figured out how large I wanted it to be on that handle, 
trimmed it down, and then glued the other end shut. I went through and painted the handle silver, the bottom green to match the movie, and left the bag the craft brown color. And then my last step for the vacuum was just a little bit of black yarn at the back to look like the cord to plug the vacuum in. I love these so much. I'm going to use these for years to come, and they're pretty easy to put together. It took me one night while I was watching Netflix to crank them out. Now, if you don't have room for the large ones, you can easily make smaller versions of this and you do it the exact same way. I got these dowel rods from Hobby Lobby. I cut them in half and painted them the respective colors. And then I added these flat little wood beads that I also got from Hobby Lobby. I used some dowel rods to create the insides of Winifred's buns on her head. And then for Sarah's hair, I went ahead and unraveled the yarn into a couple smaller pieces and that gave it the messy hair look I was going for. I tied on the cloaks the exact same way. You just need a smaller amount of fabric and these guys were ready to go. Now for their little cauldron, this is a $3 mug from the Target Dollar Spot. I just flipped it around so it was plain and hid the handle and it is the perfect size. And then to finish off the look, I added a tea light candle from Dollar Tree inside the mug so that it glowed. This next project was inspired by a message I got from a follower on Instagram. Her name is Nicole and she asked if I could dupe these napkin holders. I said, sure, let's head to Dollar Tree. Let's grab some brooms as well as these wood rings. We're gonna start by taking off the black ribbon off of the brooms and you can kind of get off the little bread tie there. Then we are going to trim the end of the broom to get it down to a better size for our napkin ring. I saved all those pieces and was able to make small second sets of brooms later on. I gave my broom a fluff and then I used that black piece of ribbon to tie my broom right onto the napkin ring. Now I did a double knot to get everything kind of laying the right way. Then I tied on the broom, I cut each end at an angle and then my last step was to trim down the broomstick because it was just a little too long. Then I could fold up my napkin, slide it on, and it was ready to go. Two fifty dollars for a set of three of these, or you can grab two packs of brooms and make a set of six of these. This is a great nod to Halloween, especially if you're not full tilt wanting to have all the orange. It's very neutral and classy. I was recently in Joann's and I saw this awesome wood cutout. I was originally going to do this project with foam core cutout, but I loved this. So I started by removing the hanger on the back because I knew I was just going to use it as a shelf sitter and I painted it with some silver paint. With the first coat dry, I mixed a little bit of black with that same silver and used a disposable makeup sponge to darken around the outside to make it look a little bit weathered. Then I measured my tombstone and cut out this free cut file that I have over on my blog. And as you are watching me weed this, you probably see the error that I made. Don't worry, I'll show you how I fixed it. So I applied it to my tombstone. I ended up cutting it apart so I could get it right where I wanted it. But I really like how this turned out because it is a really light piece, but it's sturdy because it's wood. And as I was editing, I realized I put 1963 instead of 1693. So I fixed it and we're just going to disregard that error throughout the rest of the video. Now to create the spooky mirrors that you see behind the tombstone that gave it that textured look, I grabbed two different size frames from my local thrift store and I popped out the glass. Then on one side I spritzed it with just a little bit of water and a regular spray bottle and then I sprayed over the top of the water with this mirror effect spray paint. This is going to give you that mirrored effect while also allowing you to make it look chipped and kind of blurry. Once your spray paint is on there, take a paper towel and pop the water bubbles that are underneath the spray paint and that's going to start to give you the texture you're looking for. I repeated this two to three times depending on how it turned out in the first two coats and then go ahead and let that dry. Your last step is to just spray paint the entire back, so the opposite side of your gray spray paint with some black matte spray paint, and that's gonna have the black shine through. I popped them back in the frame and layered them behind the tombstone to give it this really fun effect. And you can also add vinyl decals to the front if you wanted to put, I put a spell on you or hocus pocus. I was originally gonna do that, but I liked it with the plain look, so I left it as is. I also found these cheap candlesticks at Savers, so I brought them home and spray painted them with a coat of this black matte spray paint again. And those made them look nice and spooky and coordinate with everything. And then I just added these candles, which are from Amazon. I love how real they look, but you don't have to worry about having an open flame. With all of my decor and also with a toddler in the house, these are perfect to get that spooky look without having to worry about safety. 
Another Amazon find that I absolutely love is this Binks cat. He looks so realistic. It is perfect for this setup. He is on Prime, so I will link him down below if you want him for your setup for your watch party. I was able to find a ton of other fun Amazon finds that would be perfect if you don't have a ton of time to DIY, but you still want to decorate for Hocus Pocus. So I will link that all over in my Amazon storefront. You can click it and it will be a full list of all of my Hocus Pocus finds. Now in all my setups, you're probably seeing other items that I'm not sharing today, and that is for good reason. This is the third year that I'm doing Hocus Pocus videos. So if you see anything, I will link all of my other Hocus Pocus videos down below so that you can check those out. I've got a ton of free cut files. Last year I did one video with 20 projects, so lots of Hocus Pocus inspiration, and you can find that all down in the description. What would a Halloween party be without candy? So when I saw this bucket at Target, I knew I wanted to put some sort of decal on it. And then I thought we're back witches would be perfect. So this is a free cut file over on my blog. I just sized it to my particular container, cut it out and applied it. And this is super fun and fitting. It's definitely Hocus Pocus, but it also has a nod to the new Hocus Pocus movie. And I was able to add just some fun elements inside like some Reese's candy. I also added one of the spooky little crows that I got from Amazon and this witch's broom that I got from the Target dollar spot for five bucks. Here's a super fun alternative if you don't have a Cricut but want a fun candy bucket. I did this fun spider looking one out of a popcorn bucket from Dollar Tree. I just took my glue gun and drew out what I thought looked like a spider web on either side. I decided to do the sides that didn't have the wording on it just in case the black spray paint didn't cover fully. I took it outside and gave it three light coats of black matte spray paint and then I just dusted the top with a little bit of gold metallic acrylic paint and that helped the spider web pop. You can fill these with individual bags of popcorn for your parties or individually wrapped candy. And this is super fun and I love how it shimmers with the gold metallic paint. Another great staple to have for a Hocus Pocus setup is a book. Another item I didn't have but wanted to make this year for my setup was a book. This is just a Dollar Tree book that I tricked out using tutorials from both Bargain Bethany as well as Ashton Sedita over on Instagram and TikTok. So I will link their information down below. It's really as simple as drawing on a book with some hot glue and adding a bunch of details. I also used an eyeball, kind of ping pong ball that I found at Dollar Tree. This is cardboard here and this thing, I love how it turns turned out. So be sure to check out those tutorials so you can see how to make your own. Now once I used one eyeball for that book, I needed to find a project to use the rest of them so they didn't go to waste. So I grabbed a Dollar Tree jar as well as the extra eyeballs and a little skull that came in a pack of kind of filler from Dollar Tree. I used some hot glue to hook the skull to the top of the jar, took it outside, gave it two light coats of black spray paint. I had a fun spooky lid that way. I put the eyeballs in there. You can also add water if you want kind of a spookier effect. So I'm planning a fun Hocus Pocus watch party night with some friends here at my house. And so I wanted to create some fun treats. The first being these really fun brownie spell books. And I also wanted to create some cookies that resembled Winnie's mouth. So to make the brownies, I went the easy route and did the box mix, but instead of putting oil in there, I do the same amount of melted butter. I like the texture that it gives, but you could also do this on top of scotcheroos, or you could also do it with a sheet cake. There's a lot of different options if you can make some sort of dessert that is brown and square like the book. And I cut them out to resemble the sizes of books. My Walmart had an awesome setup in the middle of their grocery aisle with a ton of fun Halloween items. I was able to find small eyes as well as this pack with the bigger eyes that I'm using for these books. And so I used some icing just to put it down to stick the eyes onto the book. Now hindsight 2020, I could have just used the black to hook the eyeballs down instead of opening my white frosting, but you learn as you go. Then I'm taking my black frosting and outlining all the eyes. So just a circle around the candy piece. Then I'm doing a vertical line down each of the left sides and then adding some stitches carefully going right over the top of that line. Then to finish it off, I added some curved lines of icing in the top and bottom right corner of each and these are ready to go. I didn't want them to be too loaded with icing, but I wanted them to resemble the books, and I think that was a win here. I followed a tutorial on Pinterest, which I will link down below. 
Now Target has some awesome serveware for Halloween, including these appetizer plates if you're having more of a food-based party. But I loved this $20 eat, drink, and be scary tray. It is definitely substantial. So I brought that home and decided that was going to be what I used to display my little treats. Now, if you're not big on having to bake stuff yourself or having to grab too many things, they've got a lot of different kits at Walmart. They have a pretzel dipping kit. They had a ton of cookie things, so that's another option too if you wanna keep it simple and fun for kids. Now onto Winnie's mouth. I'm taking just some store-bought cookies and cutting them in half, then taking some red icing to stick them together. Then I'm gonna add some more of that red frosting along the front, kind of as lipstick, and use a knife to spread it out thinly. Then while the icing is still wet, I'm gonna stick on too many marshmallows to be Winnie's two front teeth and add any more details as needed. I got better as I went and I think these are super fun. Again, I didn't want them loaded up with too much icing, but I think they get the point across with the cute little teeth. I added some napkins that I found from Marshalls and Home Goods, and then this is just some fun Halloween candy from Dollar Tree in a Walmart container. You can also add some candy corns to your tray to add some color. And this is how I plan to incorporate some decor as well as the treats into a setup for my party. I grabbed these cups from Dollar Tree that people can fill up for drinks and some Dollar Tree paper straws. I also love that Tonight We Fly mug that I recently found at Marshall's. I also went through and added some of these black crows for some additional touch from Amazon. They come with little wires on their feet so you can hook them onto things like the mirror or the bucket like I'm showing here. I also love to use this spooky cloth from Dollar Tree just to lay over tables. It really adds that element without having to spend too much. I also was dying to try out this diffuser hack that I've seen all over the internet. So many people have done it. I don't know where it originated, but I wanted to try it too. You basically plug in a diffuser. This one I got for really cheap on Amazon. You can drill a hole in the back of your plastic cauldron that you can get pretty much anywhere right now for Halloween time. You feed it through the back, you turn on your diffuser, and then you can add some things like this deco mesh. You could also add some clear holiday ornaments if you have those, and it looks like a bubbling cauldron. And this is going to be on the table to welcome my guests into that party. Are you feeling the Salem vibes yet? I hope so. Let me know down in the comments if you plan on watching Hocus Pocus the weekend it comes out. I've got September 30th circled on my calendar for our watch party. I am super duper excited. And we actually were able to see some of the original filming locations in Salem last year. They were shooting Hocus Pocus 2 up in the Northeast when we went on our YouTube trip last year, which was fun. We weren't close enough to see it, but it was fun to know it was in the works. We also did a YouTube trip this year last week we were all in Denver there was eight of us that went and we went on a just fun trip to spend time with friends talk a little YouTube and we also made a trip in to Dollar Tree so I wanted to bring you along here are some fun moments and clips and photos from the trip I hope you enjoy so we're here at the house for our annual YouTube trip. There is a big group of us that are getting together. It's the same group as last year, minus Jane Money DIY. We're gonna miss her so much. She had a conflict this weekend. So just the eight of us, but hopefully she can join us again next year. And I had a great time. I came into Denver yesterday and met my cousin, Olivia. I spent some time downtown. We did a lot of fun stuff. We actually went to this place called Urban Putt and it is a like museum slash mini golf. And it sounds kind of funny, but it's awesome because you can go golfing and each of the holes are themed to Colorado history. So we had a great time. We had some great food. And then she picked up Sarah Jane this morning. We both picked her up and we headed to this house. Influencers in the wild. We've had a bunch of pumpkins. You take pictures in Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just getting everything ready before everybody gets here in just a couple of hours. I cannot wait for everybody to get here and to kick off this weekend. And you didn't think we would come to an Airbnb and not decorate, did you? Both of these are from Walmart. We picked them up today. This little guy was like 12 bucks, super cute, and he lights up. And it's actually a good light, as you can see. And then this Hocus Pocus sign was like 444. Super cute, fun, and festive. So our house was on this beautiful golf course in the suburb of Aurora, Colorado, and the kitchen was a great gathering place. There was a ton of space. Everybody got their own room, minus Shannon and I, but we had this huge room at the top of the stairs. We got the master and we ended up sharing it and it worked out perfectly because we both had enough space. 
So it was nice to check out everything before everybody got there. And then Sarah Jane and I got some snacks. So we put together this fun charcuterie board and then laid out all of the gifts that we had and everybody added as they came. It's kind of become a pseudo tradition on these trips for folks to bring items that they love and then we exchange them. I brought these etched campfire mugs because I thought they were fitting for Denver. And I wanted to show you how I made them because I got a ton of questions. I grabbed these Ozark Trail stackable coffee mugs from Walmart. They are in the outdoor section, not the water bottle section. I removed the outside and then cut out some stencils to the size that I wanted. This would be the same as if I was etching a glass cup, but instead of using armor etch, I'm using citrus strip. I'm putting that on with just a regular paintbrush and I'm making sure to get good coverage just like I would with an etching cream. And I'm gonna let it sit for an hour. And after an hour, you can scrape with a weeding tool and if it's scraping off, it's time to clean it. So I went to my slop sink so I didn't have citrus strip in my nice sinks at my house. I put some hot water on it, cleaned off all the citrus strip, then got rid of the vinyl decal and then started really scraping with that bristle brush. I think they turned out really good and the back of everybody's cup was customized with their channel name and a fun little YouTube logo. So a nice little memento from the trip. Once everybody arrived, we headed to the Southlands complex, which was close to our house to grab some dinner. And then we also had to run to Walmart to get some items for the house. To get us all together, we go out to dinner and we go to Walmart. You can't really see it, but we're going to Walmart. Then we ended that night pretty low key by exchanging the gifts and just kind of catching up since the last time we saw each other. I love these smocks that Jennifer gave us so that we don't get paint all over our clothes. Sarah Jane brought these super cute hats. Day two, we loaded up into our rental car and headed to Boulder. Huge shout out to Courtney who drove our crazy selves around the whole trip. We ended up walking around the downtown area of Boulder. And as you can see, it was hot that day. A lot of us had shorts and short sleeves on, but it will change. We stopped for lunch at Bar Taco in Boulder. It was a really cute spot with some fun decor and the food was great. They had super spicy, but then other options that weren't as spicy. Then we continued to explore. It was nice to just not have to be anywhere and kind of hang out together. We did some shopping and we also stopped at this fun gelato place called Gelato Boy right on the main drag. Then before leaving Boulder, we stopped at this restaurant called Avanti, hopped in the elevator and went up to the top for the best view that we had the whole time we were in Boulder. This place was gorgeous. It had some great panoramic views and all you had to do was hop in the elevator and go up. And then you also got some great views going up and down in the elevator. That night we headed into Denver for dinner at Buckhorn Exchange. This was something that a lot of folks suggested to Courtney when we asked for suggestions and it had a wide variety on the menu. It was a very eclectic and interesting place, but the food was delicious. Our waitstaff was awesome and it was just a fun time. We ended the night at Grizzly Rose. We did some line dancing and it was just fun to have that experience together. And on Friday, we had to find a Dollar Tree. Next to a Starbucks, that's like my favorite, favorite pastimes. Get a coffee, get some $1.25, not $1 anymore. Stuff. I don't have a ton of footage from this Dollar Tree, but we did meet a couple subscribers and I got to see a Dollar Tree Plus section for the first time. One of the highlights of the trip for me was our trip to St. Nick's Christmas Shop. This place was so fun and beautiful and I will just leave you to see all the gorgeousness in this shop. thought the Griswold house ornament was fitting to come home with me and I also found some gifts and fun ones for Finn and Alex. Our final day was a chill day at the house and we also took our group photos and our little sleepies pajamas. Here are some of my favorites. Then after that, I don't know why I didn't think it would be a good idea to change, but we went outside. We just put on some layers and went out. Courtney, Bethany, and I went and played some mini golf. 
We did have a fun little wager. So if you follow Courtney and I on Instagram, you probably saw some funny stories, including Bethany. If not, go check those out. And we wrapped up our final night with a fun s'mores night out at the fire pit. Megan got this fun apple cider thing that you make on a stovetop from the Christmas store. So she ended up making it and sharing it with everybody so we could have it in our fun mug. So it all came full circle. And with this many decorators in one house, we couldn't just have your average s'mores tray. Shannon had to do it up. S'mores I'm always so thankful for the time we get to spend together and YouTube is such an interesting job that it is super helpful to have friends that know what you're going through and that you can talk it through with and experience it with. That's gonna do it for today's video. Let me know down in the comments your favorite project in today's video. And also I will link details on my earrings because I always get questions about these. They are an Amazon find. And I will also link all of my other Hocus Pocus content so you can check that out if you love the movie as much as I do. Thanks so much for watching and be sure to hit subscribe if you're new so you don't miss a future Whiskey and Wit video. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.